Good evening. Thank you. First and foremost, I want to thank Renee and the Hall of Fame committee uh, for this incredible honor. I would also like to gra congratulate my fellow inductees. I am incredibly humbled and grateful to be included among such a prestigious class of amazing individuals. When I found out about the induction, I can honestly say I was taken aback, uh, completely surprised when I got the phone call. But at, at the same time, I was very proud. My career hasn't been lined with a lot of championships, nor arriving even to the highest level of professional basketball, like playing in the WNBA. Although, it ha although there have been some winning seasons, quite a few individual accolades, and a couple championships both, both locally and internationally, it was hard to acknowledge for myself that I deserve to be here. Again, among some of basketball's most important trailblazers and legends of New York. So I am very appreciative for this recognition. Next, I want to thank um, my people. Um, I was very deliberate in um, asking the people to be here um, and represent my table, um, first and foremost. I, I tried my, uh, to promise myself I wouldn't get emotional. But um, to my brothers, who represent my family, my mom who passed away two years ago. Um, I really thank you guys for beating me up when we were kids, uh, uh, playing, playing basketball, playing football, playing baseball. Without you guys, I'm quite certain I wouldn't have the competitive attitude that I have and try to harness still to this day. Um, to my first coach, Mr. Conley, um, I was speaking with uh, another guy at my table, Frank, about the, my experience with you. I promise you I don't remember any real practices, any games that we had, but I remember at the end of every practice, he would make us run sprints. <laughs> and I, but I was the fastest on my team, um, so he would run with us so that I could try to beat him. And he would bust, he would just blow me out of the water, but it was something that really helped me to keep pushing and driving. That competitive edge like my brothers had, I also got from Mr. Connolly. So Coach Connolly, so thank you. And then um, Coach Lupo, um, it was really, I can go on in many stories about you. Um, since freshman year, as an eighth grader, um, you really instilled in me a drive and a hunger and a commitment that I, continue to hold today, and without you, I wouldn't be standing here. Coach Danzi, my AAU coach, um, wow. Coach Danzi not only invested his time and his energy, but he also had really invested um, his trust in me and my family. Um, I, I, a lot of you know that AAU basketball is really expensive. I come from a large family. My mom adopted 11 kids and she had three of her own, and she was a single parent. And growing up in a household of 10, 11 kids, um, you know, p playing for AAU basketball wasn't in the cards. Um, but Coach, Ken Coach Danzi told my mom that, you know what, Ms. Dixon, don't worry about it, I got her. I'll make sure that she gets to the tournaments. I'll make sure she gets the looks that she needs. And if you can throw in a couple dollars here and there, that's fine, but whatever she needs, we're gonna look out for you. And he did that for, I wanna say, three years. Um, but also Coach Danzi, um, sat us all down in, in different conversations, my teammates and I, and he asked us uh, wh what were our goals in terms of college. And I told him I wanted to go Ivy League. Um, I wanted the best of both worlds. I had a kind of idea um, that basketball wasn't going to be the end all be all for the, the average woman, so I needed to get an education too. Um, Coach Jens was really one of the front runners and helped me get to Brown University. And I really, without you also, I am so grateful and thankful for that, Coach Danzi. Um, Co Coach Burr. Um, Coach Burr was my coach at Brown for all four years. She recruited me. She came all the way up to Albany um, from Rhode Island to convince my mom, who didn't want me to go further than Skidmore. Um, <laughs> She convinced, she convinced my mom to let me go to Providence, Rhode Island, and it was the best conversation we had, and I'm really glad it worked out. Coach Burr, you are an amazing person. I'm, I was truly honored to, coach, uh, to play for you, and I'm really grateful that you continue to be in my life. Um, as also, I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Scampini. Uh, Paul Scampini was, uh, we, I moved um, from Schenectady, uh, to another part, and Mr. Scampini and I arrived at the same elementary school, him as a prin the principal and me as a fourth grader, and he had seen me playing bas uh, football, really, because that was my favorite sport. Um, he had seen me playing football on the, on the playground, and 
he eventually told me, you know, you're good, you, you can play football, but why don't you try basketball? Mr. Scampini introduced me to my first basketball camps at nine years old at Siena College under uh, Gina Costelli, who was inducted last year. Um, but about, more than that, he really it became a male role model for me. Continues to be, we're counting on, I guess, nearly 23 years knowing each other. I call him all the time, We're even when I'm far away. And I'm just grateful that I continue to count on you and that you're still in my life. Thank you very much. And then also, Mr. Barkham, uh, he was my guidance counselor in high school, and he also was one of the reasons that I was able to get to Brown. He kept me on the right track. Um, I slacked off too much when I was in high school, but it was really um, him, Mr. Scampini, who was also still around in high school, Coach Lupo, who really helped me to stay on track and get, uh, helped me to get to Brown. Um, I also want to thank Frank Caprio, who for the last year has really been in my corner. And I really appreciate your mentorship and everything that you've done for me over the, almost the last year. Um, I was asked to, Renee asked me to talk a little bit about why I love basketball. And I think the best way to do that is chronologically uh, explain. When I was about eight or nine, as I said, if someone would have asked me why I love basketball, I would have said I don't. Uh, I played football. My older brothers played football at U Albany, so it was really what I wanted to do. Um, but it wasn't until I was 12 and uh, had gone through a few basketball camps, had made my first team, that if someone would ask me, Why do you love basketball? I would have said, I think I'm good at it. Um, but it's my coaches who had seen me play, they could say at 12 I was not good. I was athletic. And to me, at, at 12, being athletic, you know, I could jump, I could run. Being athletic was good enough, but uh, it really wasn't. It wasn't until um, I was in college with Coach Burr, and, and well, no, excuse me, let me, I'll, let me go back. It wasn't until high school when, with Coach Lupo, um, when I was recruited and played up in varsity as a freshman, that I really fell in love with basketball. Um, because it gave me an identity and it gave me a purpose. Um, I was the basketball player. I didn't define myself with that by anything else. But with Coach Lupo, um, she really instilled in me a, a direction and, and, and competitiveness and mental toughness to keep pushing. Um, it was, I'd like to give, give a story about Coach Lupo and what she put us through as a team. Of course, we were a young team playing against girls as varsity uh, two and three years above us. Um, and it was it was tough. So we had to play tougher, we had to play stronger, we were, had to be mentally tougher than a lot of our uh, opponents. And really, that we ended up arriving to the challenge, setting the bar high for, for ourselves. And that's a lot of the reasons why we won the league championship. Very importantly, though, with Coach Lupo is between my junior and senior year, she took us to an AAU tournament in, in Newark, New Jersey. We were all packed in her car. We were going. Um, and what was really funny is we had come off a really good season our junior year. So we were thinking we were, we were the stuff, right? Um, we get to New Newark, New Jersey, and this is a local to AAU tournament and we just get our butts kicked. These girls were all high major D1 players, jump in and grab in the rim, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and it really t dawned on us that we had a lot of work to do. We had already done a lot, but we weren't the best. So we had to humble ourselves again, and going into my senior year, it was exactly what we needed to push us ahead. We finished the year 19 and four. We did win the big league, uh, the Big Ten uh, championship, the only in our school's history for women's basketball. And without that experience, <laughs> Um, there's, there's a lot I can say, um, again, with Coach Burr. Coach Burr um, is the reason that I was, it, it had such a successful career at Brown. Um, people were, were explaining about the 10 hours we work out in the gym. I was the kid at Brown who put school second. Um, I, was just, I was just skating by academically. I was on academic probation my junior year. I don't think most people know that. Um, <laughs> But, um, but I, was, I, was a, I was the player that the gym got closed, the Pizzatola Center got closed off. I was taking my brown ID or another card, breaking into the side door so I could work out extra. Or I was sleeping in the locker room, 
wake <laughs> Coach Bird didn't know. <laughs> Coach Bird didn't know that <laughs> I was sleeping in the locker room, practicing, working out on my own because at that point I wanted to be the best. It was a mentality that my brothers helped instill in me from a young age, and that Coach Burr, Coach, all of my coaches helped instill in me from until until to, to this day. Um, Coach Burr also was really the reason why I started my career abroad. Um, when I graduated Brown in 2013, I. It was my goal to hoop dreams, loving basketball, to get overseas, to play in Spain, to play wherever. Um, and after I graduated Brown, it took about a year for me to, to get abroad. Um, and I didn't have any options. And somehow Coach Burr came across an email forwarded to me about the opportunity to play in, in Edinburgh, Scotland, um, and get my master's at the same time. I had no intention on ever going back to school, going to grad school, um, but when it came with as a package deal, then I took it. Um, I, I was a scholarship player for the University of Edinburgh. I got my master's in sports policy and international development, and I won three championships along the way. Um, from there, <laughs> thank you. Uh, from there, I was, um, I decided I wanted to keep playing, go pro, um, and I had my first offer to play in the Women's ba British Basketball League in Manchester. Um, this, the August of 2015, they changed the visa process rules and I got, my contract I got rescinded. And I, in August of 2015, I didn't have anywhere to go, but I wasn't going back home. Um, fortunately for the connection that I had in, in Scotland, I was able to go to Spain where I played for, began playing for, <laughs> began playing for football club Barcelona. A lot of you guys know that as a soccer team, um, I know it as for the basketball team. We went on to win two championships, helped the team to get to the, to the um, first division. All that to say, and I'm gonna jump ahead, um, is that, it has been four years since I stopped playing officially and almost nine years since I was went abroad. Now I dedicate time to providing young athletes with the opportunity to play basketball and get closer to their dreams. I've, I've uh, founded two companies in, the, in Spain. I now love basketball because through it I have become a mentor and a coach quite similar to the most important people in my life while I was playing. Basketball continues to give me a life that I could never have ever imagined coming from little Schenectady. Like I said, I've won championships, I've traveled to many parts of the world, and I, and I now speak three, three languages. I now have two companies, and I've even bought a house abroad as well. I've gained so much because of basketball, and being, induct and being inducted into the New York State Hall of Fame. In the year 2023, I wore 23 throughout my entire career. It's really just the cream on top, so thank you very much.